Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art With Me Speak. Today I am glad to, to guide you in another beautiful watercolor practice. This practice is beginner and intermediate friendly and as I told you in uh, my previous practice with watercolor, I'm gonna guide you step by step and teach you how to become more familiar and more confident with this beautiful media, which is the watercolor. I am kind of uh, listening to what my students ask me, what they would like to practice when they are not in school with me, and some of the viewers that are leaving comments in my YouTube channel. And so here I am offering you what you asked, which is like, you know, to become a little more confident in using this, uh, the watercolors. Watercolors, as you know, comes with that, this surprising element that we cannot control them 100%, at least not when we are starting to use them. Then the more you use them, the more you practice, the more expert you will become and you will be able to really feel more confident in play with the amount of water that you're going to use. So. Since this practice is beginner and inter intermediate friendly, we are going to actually sketch, we are going to outline with an extra fine markers, and then we are going to use the watercolor. We are gonna use the, the technique that is the most traditional one, which is called wet on dry, which means that our watercolor paper remains dry and we just wet the brush and the watercolor itself. Sometimes when you see the beautiful blended uh, watercolor, when you will be more advanced and confident in this technique, we can learn together how to use the, the wet on wet. One time I used it in one of my mindful practice, but that was not related to any design. It was just like a completely non-objective abstract when I wet the paper first and then you will wet the watercolors. So there is always so much to tell about watercolor and I don't want to be too long in the introductions, but it is important that you understand what we are about to do. So get yourself ready. For this practice, you will need watercolor paper, any size, a brush, one or two, medium and small, a cup of water, of course, some paper nearby, just in case you need to tap the brush and dry it a little bit because you too, you used a little too much water, and then a watercolor palette. If you do not have the same watercolor palette that I have the feature primary, secondary, tertiary, remember that now we know, because we did many practices together about the color wheel and about the colors, how we can make them. Remember that if you mix a little bit of white with the color, you're going to have a tint, so you're going to kind of create a pastel version of the color. If you use a little bit of gray and mix it, you're going to mute that and you're going to create some tones. And if you add the black into the color, you're going to dark it up and create your shade. You can create tertiary color by mixing secondary and primary. So now you know everything that you need to know. I'm going to switch the camera so we can do this beautiful practice together. And remember to have fun, feel relaxed, put yourself in a comfortable position. You can have some nice music in the background. I will talk a little bit during the practice to guide you better or you can just watch my video and then practice at your own convenience. So remember that you need to do you and you need to adapt my practices. Okay, so we are going to do a very simple landscape. So we review the general rules for drawing a landscape. We're going to set uh, um, a line of the horizon that doesn't have to be perfect because we are doing a natural landscape. So we want to make sure that it's light and irregular. This one is the foreground. So here we're going to put the biggest and more detailed shapes in our landscape. We can do some grass. Remember that we are just sketching. Sketching is different than drawing. We just want to like have our basic outline and everything else will happen then when we do the painting we are going to do some flowers you can do as many as you want you don't have to do my flowers you can do your own if you have a favorite flower i personally love daisies and poppy flowers so i'm gonna kind of inspire myself with those type of flowers but you as i say you can do you you can add leaves very simple. Remember the focus is on the practice itself and not exclusively on the design. Of course, we need a design because you know you want to make sure that you know what you're going to color. For this practice, since we are still learning how to control the watercolor, we want to have a nice defined uh, sketch so we can then uh, 
control the water color a little better. So we need to control the amount of water that we use. We need to make sure that um, we don't have too much water. Otherwise, the color will be very pale and it will blend. Remember also that we're going to do the black outline with the black markers. Make sure that regardless the brand, it's a permanent marker, like a Sharpie or something like that. If you use a regular marker, a washable marker, unfortunately, the outline will be blended and washed uh, with the water. So we want to make sure that we don't do that. So we're going to do our nice landscape. We're going to keep adding flower here and there. You can add, as I say, as many as you want. You can mix them. You can create your own flowers. They don't have to be existing flowers. So realistic or whatever you want to do, it is going to be okay. We just need a design that allowed us to practice the technique. My students ask me all the time, can I add this? Can I add that? Of course. Remember that art is something very personal. And the first thing that we should do is finding our own personal connection with art, regardless our skill level, our familiarity with media and stuff like that. Then we are going to create an illusion of space, right? That changing the dimension so we go from something bigger and more detailed to something a little less detailed to something smaller smaller all the way until the background so we're gonna do here again tiny tiny flower at this point they will come just sort of a scribble and then because they are very far away so we cannot see the same details that we see in those flowers right so just really scribble scribble the grass Scribble a few flowers that you might want. So they're going to give us the opportunity to use multiple colors and not just have green. Like that. Pretend that you're doing tiny, tiny, tiny uh, clouds. You scribble. Scribble those flowers. Here we're going to have more. We scribble the grass because, of course, we cannot see more than that from our point of view and our angle. Now, here we can add some, you know, plants and bushes. Once again, scribble, scribble, because we will be pretty far at this point. So we won't be able to see more details than the one that we are doing. We can have a tree, right? We want to use very sketchy and you know, lines, very regular, and then we scribble. Always pretend that you're doing a lot of swirls and you're scribbling like you're doing a, a cloud. Hmm? Nothing more. It's an optical illusion. We are not doing a one leaf at a time. It's an optical illusion that creates us the beautiful illusion of tree, right? Scribble, scribble. We're going to put a beautiful tree over here. This might be a little bigger than the other because it's a little closer. So let's do this. You can pause my video at any time so you can finish and catch up with the design and then you can keep going. Or as I say, you can look at the video and see what I do and then play the video again while you are practicing. So you have, you know, you can watch it twice. Maybe the first one, you can speed it up a little bit, but you know, you want to know what you, we are doing. There you go. And if you want in the very, very background, we can trace another line, a second line of an horizon that is even farther apart, sort of a hill that is stay behind this tree. And maybe we can have some, I don't know, we are in the countryside, so we can have some crops, right? And this one will give the opportunity to use a multiple color in the background, maybe different color of earth, tones, brownish, yellowish gold depend on the crops that we want to right we can have a tiny tiny brushes at the point and here maybe here this one is going to be just i don't know another type of crop and here we can have another so we're gonna really do very simple sketch basically using a variety of lines so that we study together 
in several of these practices, and we leave this one to be the sky. So let's review. We have the foreground, middle ground, the background, and the very far away background. Now we're going to grab our extra fine markers, and we're going to go on top of the design one more time, which is a very good practice. And also remember, even when we use the markers, we don't want to go too thick, too precise. So we are just like outlining what we did. If you want to add a few details with the marker, do so. Remember that the marker is a permanent marker, which is not water soluble. So when we will paint, nothing is going to happen to our black outline. So we don't want this outline to be too thick. We want to really use the same sketching technique with quick dynamic lines, broken lines, scribbling lines, something really the opposite of precise, which is great because we can let it go a little bit, right? The same is for our tiny little flower in the back. We do exactly the same type of movement that we did before. So scribbling lines, sketching and dynamic, as I already said. If you want to add a few black marks, do so. I'm going to allow, you know, I'm going to add some details myself. Look at what I do. I go pretty quickly. I don't allow myself to go super perfectly on top of my lines. I don't want, as we say, anything that is too defined. Remember that most of the time, if not all the time, painting is a matter of an optical illusion, right? We don't need to precisely or geometrically represent something, but we give the illusion, the idea, the visual suggestion of something. I'm going over my flowers. I'm going over my leaves. I'm going over my grass. Don't push too much with your marker on the surface of the paper. This is something that I can always say and I will repeat so many times. So just go gentle. You just need to set a mark on the paper. You don't need to carve the paper. So just in case you change your mind, even with the pencil, right? We sketch, we want to touch the paper gently. We want to have a gentle mark so we can change our mind. We can fix the mark. We can erase with no problem. It's not so immediate for some of us. It takes a longer time to learn how to control the pressure of our hand. But it's a good, you know, the more you practice, uh, the better and the faster, oopsie, sorry, you will do. So let's keep going. We're going to trace our line of the horizon. And it doesn't really matter, as you see, if you don't trace exactly on top of the pencil markers that you did before, because we are going to erase the pencil before we paint. So we won't be able to see any marks with the pencil at all. You can add a little like uh, scribbles here in the plants and the bushes to create that optical illusion of the texture. Okay. The same is for the tree, as we say, scribble, scribble, nothing more than scribble. The shape should be natural, it should not be perfect or symmetric. And now we're going to trace our final line of the horizon. I'm going to go back and complete this tree. And remember, if you need to go a little slower, once again, pause the video, dedicate time and attention, and create the design that you want. And now, very, very gentle, barely touching the paper, you will go on top of this texture that we created, which basically is a repetition of lines that we created on the very background to represent uh, 
far away crops so we can give the optical illusion of some like a texture right so this could be a crop this could be just uh, dirt for example getting ready or this could be some type of plant we just need really very very delicate outline once we finish we put away the markers and you're going to use any eraser that you have available to erase the pencil lines so we patient we erase and once we are ready we are going to start the painting so remember also to prepare yourself with a cup with the water brushes as you need one or two medium or small i will use a pretty small one because my space is pretty small if you have a bigger landscape you can do with a, a, a bigger brush and prepare yourself i'm going to prep my material as well after i finish it with race and we can resume our painting experience now all of our design is you know the pencil lines are all erased we clean up the paper and we start to have fun and you can start from the background uh, from the like from the foreground from the background whatever you want we are going to i'm going to start from the foreground i'm going to start with some green so remember that we are learning the technique of wet on dry so the paper is dry and the brush, of course, with the watercolor is wet. You want to make sure that you don't use too much water because you want to make sure that you can go inside some of your details. As you see, I'm using very simple bro like a brush strokes to go on top of my grass. Then I will use a different type of green. And remember, if you do not have a rich palette that doesn't offer you all the colors, you can make your colors. If you want a darker green, you can dark up. If you want more of the like a blue green, you can dark it up with a blue. You can just add a little bit of gray if you want a more muted type of green. Or you can add a little bit of black to make it like darker. You can also mix the green with the yellow, so you will have a lime green, right? So we can play around and create as many, as many tones of the same colors or as many tints as we want. So be creative, have fun. And remember, it doesn't have to be something of perfections, like it, we, don't, we are not painting exactly inside of the shapes that we created. These are allowed us to have a guidance. So mostly for beginner and intermediate, I feel that for me at least it was much easier to learn like this, doing the sketch, going over the sketch with the, um, the sorry, with the marker and then try to control the water then the more expert you will become and then the more like you can let it go and actually we're gonna lose the sketch we're gonna lose the black uh, uh, outlined you see i'm mixing now a more like a type of a warmer type of green definitely lighter i'm gonna mix it back with the darker we want to have fun because remember more like we don't have to if you use the same tone of the same colors all the way then we have something that is really boring and flat instead we want something with interest and personality right which is the contrary of something perfect i'm gonna pick the light green again I'm going to have the, some of this beautiful light warm green on top of the dark one. You see how pretty. I'm 
I'm definitely kind of uh, getting inspired by the season and the spring. Although here in Utah, where I am, I decided to go back to winter. So this is probably more of a need and necessity than anything else because I really need to see some sun and finally some warmth. So you can color the flower the way you want. I'm gonna use a red for my poppy flower. And I see maybe it's super, super, super light blue for my daisy. We'll see. You can do you. Remember that we try to control. So you see, I barely touch the paper with the tip. I don't even feel completely the area because I want to leave some space for uh, a lighter red. Remember that with watercolors, we cannot go with the lighter watercolor to cover a darker watercolor. So unfortunately, once you put the color there, it stays there. You cannot make it lighter. You can only make it uh, darker. So you want to make sure that you leave some spaces white and maybe you can just like put some, uh, uh, tap the brush in the water and then expand. You see, I clean up basically the brush and you can expand that red that you already put on your uh, flowers. So it's going to look a little lighter in some of the areas and a little more intense in some other. Right, give us a little that variety. This one, I'm gonna tap a little bit of red here and a little bit more water. So, this one is gonna be lighter, probably because it's more exposed to the light. If you want to dark it up, then you go and you dark it up. But remember, once it's there on the paper, it's there on the paper. There is no way to go back lighter. So, be make sure to be careful and don't add. Too much color at the beginning don't go too dark at the very beginning but just like you know moderate that i created an extremely light light blue i didn't want to leave them completely white but i'm just really brushing this blue not even precisely inside the little petal Then I'm going to do a little like yellow orange, very little water at this point because I really want to control the yellow. I'm gonna put yellow in the center of the flower. It doesn't matter, you see, blend it a little bit, it's perfectly fine. I'm gonna add some of this yellow that I still have on my brush here and there for some of these flowers. And then maybe I'm going to dark them up and I'm going to do something a little orange, like the little, you know, um, marigold or you let, you see, I'm gently barely touching the paper. I'm not concerned at all that I'm going outside. Now we're going to let the flower set. So we don't want to do the green immediately after because we want to let those watercolor to dry. So we're going to switch and color and paint the rest. So we are going to have fun with some brown, uh, green, uh, brown grayish uh, you do you and we're gonna create this beautiful background of this uh countryside somewhere so i created like a pretty warm brown if you do not have brown in your palette which you should but let's say that you have a very limited palette remember that mixing the complementary will give you brown so if you mix the red and the green or the orange and the blue it's gonna give you brown now I'm going to go with the darker. You can dark up the brown that you will create by using gray or black. Or if you can light it up because you want more of a pastel brown, you will go with uh, white. Although, as you can imagine, the white in the watercolor is not as effective as the white in the acrylic. So I'm going to color between. I probably want to dark up my brown, so here I am using a little bit of black and not too much of water because I want to be able to see, to control. You see, it doesn't when I touch the paper and I paint, it doesn't expand so much, so it allows me to control, which means that you need to keep the brush in the water 
and then in the color that you need to mix and make, but making sure that you tap it on the paper before painting on the on our landscape. So you know that you can control because the, you removed the, the excess of water, basically. And as I say, I feel that for beginner intermediate, the fact that we are following a design, that you want to stay in the design, it's like a helpful for gaining some familiarity and some control of the colors, the watercolors, so this technique, and then little by little you can kind of let it go and you will be able to paint directly without doing the design or the outline or maybe you will create more blended pieces or you can have fun using different techniques like wet on wet, for example. Now for this one, we're going to switch and we're going to try a different color, maybe more on the greenish olive. Let's see what happened. Nice. Still similar because, you know, it's still dirt, still crops, but we want to have some variety. So once again, have fun. As you see, I'm spreading the color. I'm not concerned that I'm not actually feeling all the space. This we created the optical illusion of light. So we are doing some value, which is light and dark. The alternation, basically, a value pattern is the alternation of area of darkness and area of light. I'm going to do the background here of the tree. And here, maybe we can add a little more, a little darker, because that is maybe behind the tree. That is not the same exposure to light. We have this, and now here I'm going to do some more, some green. It is beautiful because you see, we have a variety of colors, so it's not flat, it doesn't look boring. You add some nice point of interest. I'm going to mix this green with a little bit of that brown that I used before, just because the green was too bright, and I want something that it's instead on the olive type of green. So I'm going to do first the plants, this, you know, imaginary reference to crops and plants. Then I'm going to tip my brush in the water and I'm going to probably light it up a little before the background of those. So there is going to be a little bit of, you see, difference. So we'll still be able to see two different uh, tint because I use some white of green. Very nice uh, without too much concern of being perfectly inside that. We can use this green also for some of the plants and bushes here. Now we are going to do our bushes here. I want to make them a little darker so they look also, we can give the illusion of the space, not only with the size, but also with color. So let's say that this one on the background, they are pretty light color, maybe using a darker and more intense color on the bushes and the brown of the trees is going to give us even more an optical illusion of space, this three-dimensionality. Oopsie, sorry. I know being a left hand is always a challenge. If you're left hand, you know what I'm talking about. We always have to find our own way to position ourselves, in this case, the camera. As you notice, I'm not feeling completely all the bushes. This one, yes, but I want to allow myself to play maybe with a lighter green. And remember what we just say. Once you place the watercolor on the paper, the color is there. It's not going to fade. It is impossible for us to cover it up. So you need to make sure that you go little by little. You don't dark it up too much at the very beginning. So you have the freedom then to light it up. And once again, alternating, creating this value pattern, which is this alternation, between light and dark is going to give your piece more movement, more interest, a better optical illusion. 
and it's gonna be definitely you know better it's also gonna give us the opportunity to review the color wheel sorry to review the value oh my what am i this morning now three you do the same remember that it's really up to you if you want to have a fall three you will have a very warm palette if you want to have a more on the spring uh, theme that i'm going for you're gonna use a beautiful bright green once again look what i'm doing i'm uh, scribbling with my brush going inside the scribble that i created with you with pencil and markers i am leaving some of the spaces white because i want to play with this i want to blend this with more water or i want to play with a lighter uh, green and I'm going to use uh, the same type of green for the other three. I'm using a little bit of water because I don't want my colors to blend too much. I really want to control them so they can stay inside the spaces that I designed in the first step. Now, I'm gonna add a few of these a little darker over here. I will dark up some of the bushes here and here. There you go. Now, let's light up some of the trees. Like, I'm gonna use a lighter green now. And I'm going to tap this lighter green in the spaces that I left white. Not too much because the colors are still pretty wet, so they will blend together. And I use the, the rest, you see, to go on top and add the one more darker green to help us and reinforce that optical illusion, right, that we are going for. Now we are going to do the tree trunks and then we can switch and going back to our foreground because as I touch it, it's all basically dry. If yours is not dry, just wait a little longer. Don't rush it because otherwise you will risk to ruin it. I'm like putting some black inside of my brown because I want it pretty dark and not too warm. Control it as much as possible. So in this case, you really barely touch the paper with your brush. You do very tiny movement. It's almost a black brown, the one that I got. You can have it a little lighter if you want. I like mine so very much, so it's perfect. Um, you need to control it if something happens. It's not a big deal. You can add the more uh, branches to your uh, trees. You just have to use uh, the minimum amount of water necessary for you to add the color because we always have to use a little water, right? Because they are watercolor. But don't overdo it and make sure that you can control it as much as possible so you see i'm barely touching the paper i go slow you take your time if you need to go slower go slower if you need to change your brush with a tiny one otherwise sometimes as you see and as you notice i use the same brush it's just that i uh, modify the pressure so if i push harder my brush tip will become bigger and will give me bigger marks but if i don't um, it will give me a very, very thin. I'm using this one to actually this darker brown and now it's becoming a little lighter and lighter to go a little bit, of, not completely and not perfectly as outlining my heel, my line of the horizon, but just to create a little bit more interest. So we're going to expand maybe and create some roots, right? Because nature it's, you know, it's perfect in its own way. And of course, it creates a lot of like uh, balanced patterns and almost geometric in some cases. But in a landscape like this, nature gives us that variety that we want to try our best to keep, right? You can even just do a few strokes with the brown on the foreground to dark it up. And sometimes we know that we can have some, you know, 
brownish um, grass. Now, we can go back and we can finish the green here. In this case, we're going to use the opposite technique. It's always wet on dry, so the paper is always dry. But in this case, we want the color to blend. We don't need to have the same control that we had for the tree. So for the trees. So you choose your green, brownish, whatever you want to. I will use a multiple type of green, maybe one brighter. Then I will go uh, with the darker one. And remember, friends, don't dark it up too much at the beginning because once it's there, it's there. In this case, I also, after I create the color on the brush, I will dip the, mar the brush in the water again so it's a little wet, even more wet, and it allows me to spread the color better. I need a blended color, so I will create my green again. This time I mix it with the darker one. As we say, you can mix it with white, with gray, with black at the very end. So don't do the darkest one right now. You're going to go around the flowers. You're going to spread it, maybe tap the water again without dipping it to the color. Again, you can go on top of the marker uh, strokes because, as we say, they are permanent, so nothing happened. And then you can even eventually go over. But I want that you know, I I suggest you to go around the design just because you don't want to compromise and spoil the color that you set at the beginning. I'm setting a pretty light green, as you notice because I want to have the opportunity to work it up and make it a little darker if I want to, and then maybe go with the darker green on top of my little grass leaves that we trace together with the marker, just to once again support the natural texture and the optical illusion of it. Remember that when we are talking about painting is an optical illusion. So even the texture, they're not real, right? Because when we touch the paper, the paper has its own texture, and that is the real texture of the paper. But we can create an implied texture. This is how we call it, which is an optical illusion. Now, very gently, you will go between the leaves that you trace at the very beginning. So you go between the flower the leaves of the flowers between the petals. If you touch them inside, it's not a big deal. When you feel that your brush is getting too dry, you will create the color again. You will dip it, like, dip it in the water as much as you need, and then you do it again. You see, in this case, it's definitely much wetter, more wet than it was before. I can control it, in fact, a little less. But for what we need to do, it's totally fine. So let's finish and going around between. Now we want to make sure that, you know, we don't leave too much white spaces, even though if we leave some, it's really pretty. And it will enhance that illusion of light coming in and reflecting on the object of our landscape. One final spot to cover. And now the first coat is done, so we're going to kind of rework a little bit, right? And making sure that it looks nice and natural. So I'm going to switch to a darker green and a little less water, so a little more control. So I can actually first try it over here and then dark up some of the grass, right? Some of the details that we created so it doesn't look all plain. You create a spot of darker green, you bring it up. Uh, 
the color will tend to blend because our surface is still pretty wet, right? So we're going to take advantage of the fact that it's still wet and spread our darker green in a way that looks like natural and organic, so we don't see harsh, um, you know, passages between the darker and the lighter green. I'm going to use more of an olive green as well because we want to create that variety. Remember that if you think that your brush is getting too wet, tap it on the paper before going on your surface to paint. Take a look at your piece, make all the adjustments, have fun, embrace this beautiful palette that we are creating. You can go back between the leaves with a dryer brush so you can kind of spread the green between the leaves. You can go back to a very dark. This is what I definitely will do. I will tap it because I don't want it to, uh, to wet. but I definitely want to bring back that little darkness here in the foreground, because as we say, in the foreground, color should be more saturated than in the back. That will help the optical illusion of space. So that this idea of something that it's fading away, three-dimensional, right? And more uh, natural, definitely. You can add as much grass as you want, as much dark and light green as you want. I'm going to create some uh, sort of a area a little darker underneath the flowers, right? To create that optical illusion of a shadow. I'm going to dip my brush in the water and smooth this transition down, as you see, very gently. You can smooth the transition so we don't see one line, right? But we blend it a little better and bring it all the way down as we want. The perks of not using too much water and being able to control the water, the amount of water, it's you know gives you the opportunity to work and rework and rework on an area over and over without damaging the piece or uh, you know, breaking the paper. Now I'm going to really dark up some of the grass near the tree roots. Definitely the tree will block part of the light. So the grass before, like uh, in front of it, is going to be definitely darker. I'm going to dark up even here because the bushes and the plants can do the same. So we create a beautiful value pattern. Look how pretty we tap it. And you know, I could do this forever. So at one point we decided that we have enough, that it looks, you know, nice to us. It looks complete. It looks done. And at the point we are ready to move forward. Think that it's really pretty. It looks nice. I'm gonna blend this transition a little better. Tip a little bit my brush into the water. So I'm gonna go over and just make sure that I blend some of the transition. If you think that you wanna go over and redo some of the colors of your flowers to make them look like better and brighter do so i'm in fact adding a little bit of blue with a tiny 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 bit of water so once again the same technique that i used for the tree because i really want to control this time i don't want the colors to expand i want the color to stay where i uh, put it so it is important if you think that your the brush is too wet don't forget to use the paper 
you just feel that this blue was a little too pale and that my flower were not standing out enough and I want them instead since they are part of the foreground I really want them to be a pretty you know important detail in this landscape and actually with the same blue and a little bit of water I'm going to add a little bit of blue in the flower just tapping you see just tapping so we create an optical illusion that there is a variety of flowers over there, some bigger, some smaller, some orange, some yellow, and some blue. I think it's very, very pretty. I'm going to tap a few blue over here as well, a few blue over here. And now we can lose it up again to do our sky, and we are almost done, my friends. Once again, remember, if you want to leave like a song clouds, remember that you cannot paint with a lighter such as white on top of another color when we use watercolors. We can do that when we use acrylics or oil, but we cannot do it once using watercolors. So prep your blue, the blue of the sky that you want. If you want a sunset, it's good. But with the color palette that we use, I suggest you to go for a blue sky. And if you want to have some like a you can leave area up like completely white. So you can play with those. Mm. Wet your brush and don't take the colors anymore and just use the color that you created to expand it. Then you will pick a little bit more color. You will pick some more water. And just remember, touch the paper, gently move this water around. Have fun. Carry the color up, blend it and mix it. Remember that it's beautiful too. We are going to put some blue of the sky also behind our trees, right? And even some, you see, look, I'm tapping with the blue because to give that illusion that the, you know, the, the light filter between the branches and the leaves. And then carefully around a beautiful tree, expand and mix the color that you have. And we keep doing this until we finish with our sky. And even if you're doing a blue sky, it is perfectly fine that the tones of the blue are different and the saturation actually, the saturation of the color is different. So when we add the more water, we are taking away some saturation and when we add a little less, we are, you know, keeping a very intense saturation of the color. Once again, you can tap some of the blue between the tree. And I have it a little more saturated here. Very gently, take your time and don't rush it, and then gently, gently, gently spread this color. Spread the color. I'm going to tap in the brush because I really want to kind of add a little bit of blue inside this cloud as well. I don't want to leave it so neat. Actually, I think that I probably won't have any clouds at all in my sky. I see so many clouds outside that I don't want to have any clouds at all in my sky today, at least not in my painting. I want a beautiful blue spring sky. I'm expressing a wish through my painting today. Once you think that you have your beautiful sky done, you take a one final look. If that is something that you want to add, I'm going to dark up a little bit over here. Oopsie, a little bit over here just to create and enhance that optical illusion of the texture of the ground. I want to create a little more variety 
in the value and I want to add this value pattern. And we are all done. And this is our beautiful landscape. And thank you so much for staying with me, painting with me, and learning a little bit more how to control watercolors, starting from a wet to dry technique. I'm going to switch the camera so we can say goodbye. Okay, friends, thank you so much for staying with me in this practice. Definitely when we paint, we need to take a longer time, so it cannot be a super short practice, but I think that it's really worth it. This is a nice countryside, spring-inspired landscape. I wish I could see yours. Remember, I am doing these practices to let you become more familiar and more confident with watercolor. So this is why we are using a wet-on-dry technique. We focus on the right amount of water and we do a design with a pencil and we outline with a marker so it's kind of a clearer for our eyes for your eyes to see the element in your design and being able to decide the color palette and also to control that amount of water then maybe in the future we can do other activities when instead of outlining with the markers at the beginning we're gonna kind of sketch paint let it dry and then do the outlines and at the end that we're gonna do a really uh, uh heavily blended uh, technique which in which you use a little bit of the control this is why it is important for you to build that confidence first and that control first i hope you enjoy it and painting is such as intimate personal and relaxing activity remember to do you and to stretch and fix and change the practice as you wish if you need to add the more element because you are more intermediate advanced painter do so if you are a beginner keep it simple if you want to take away some of the details that i do remember that you need to do you the most important thing is the process is understanding the technique and getting more familiar and confident with that and also have fun and dedicate yourself a little time in which you forget about everything else you bubble yourself and you stay focused on one activity for an extended amount of time. I see you all next week with another beautiful practice. Please consider to subscribe to my channel. It's thanks to you and your feedback and your support that this channel is growing and we are building a beautiful, safe community for all artists of any level, any age, or people who just appreciate art and they want to try something new and different. So thank you, thank you so much and subscribe spread the words like my video and send me comment comment if you have send me questions I will be happy to answer and I will be happy to adjust my video according to your needs ciao a tutti and we see you soon ciao